No, you're not bringing home another piece of junk. Morning, everybody. So, uh, and my flight got in kind of late last night, like midnight. I didn't get home and get to bed till two in the morning, so I'm kind of ugh this morning. But I got a little time this weekend, wanted to get back on this hood, and I'm hoping to get most of this hood finished this weekend. Um, so one of the things I'm kind of dealing with is when I cut these slots here, where I got to repair that rust, if you look in there, you can see quite a bit of surface rust and it's sandwiched between two layers of metal and there's really there's limited options you know I don't want to cut the whole front of this hood off and like I said with rust you just you, you can't get it all so you treat what you can get to and and uh, kind of hope for the best and one of my rules of thumb is when I do one of these old cars like this is once you get it done keep it out of the weather keep it out of the rain you know, I kind of hand wash it and dry it. You know, don't dry it when there's snow and stuff. Now that's, that's kind of a, that's kind of everybody's choice, whether, you know, you just want to drive it all the time or whatever. But I, you know, once I fight all this rust up, I like to try to keep it from coming back as long as I got the car. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do before, um, when I cut these slots, I took that, rust inhibitor paint and spray it down up as, as much as I could reach. So this stuff, I just got it in this other jar. This is Rust-Oleum uh, Rust Neutralizer. And and uh, I had a, a gallon of this, and what uh, a lot of times what we use this for in the maintenance industry is we'll use it like on pump bases or pump housings, you know, we'll. We'll clean them up, we'll paint them with this, and then we'll paint them with uh, good Rust-Oleum safety paint. And this stuff is pretty good about neutralizing rust and it not coming back once you put paint on top of it. Which I'm not gonna be able to put paint on top of it where I'm putting it, but anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I've, I've saved some of this and I'm just gonna, I got the hood here, I got a couple of blocks here tilting it up. <clears throat> I'm going to pour this stuff down here, let it run down there as much as I can, and then we're going to flip this hood, and I'm going to pour it down the other slot down the other way. And uh, it's going to make a mess, but it's going to at least run down and get to a lot of that stuff that I can't get to, and hopefully we'll uh, keep those areas from rusting again for a while. Hopefully for as long as I got the car. So yep. So now it's running out the bottom. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, after I weld these patches in, I'm going to flip this hood around backwards and stand it nose down. And there's a couple of slots in the back of this hood that I can pour, and it'll run down this way. <clears throat> so hopefully that'll help with with that part of the rust too. Like I said, it's gonna make a mess and I'm just gonna let it make a mess for now and I'll clean it up later. All right, so we got that one. Now, let's flip it over the other way. Um, yeah. It's a pretty heavy hood. blocks over here <clears throat> get some tilt on this thing I don't know if you can see the front of that hood no, no, yep all right now I'm gonna go down this way I'll kind of let this dry before I 
a little bit before I start welding on it because I'm going to sand this whole hood down. So once I'm done with this, we'll put it back up on the bench and I'm just going to take some 40 grit, knock this whole hood down. When I'm done with that, then we'll weld these back in, kind of give this stuff some time to, to dry. It's not flammable, so that's good. All right. And then this other stuff, if I look at having it on this angle, I can kind of see some more places that that stuff might not get to so let's see if we can get this in here i don't care how big of a mess it makes i can wipe it all out to where you won't see it i just want to get stuff on that rust as much as possible All right. So I'm gonna let that sit a minute. I'm gonna wipe this up. I'm gonna throw this back on the table. And uh, we're gonna start sanding this hood. Once we get all down to bare metal, we'll patch these. And uh, we'll see what we got. Just saying in here and want to stop for a minute and just kind of point out something interesting so this car has never been repainted this is factory color there is no primer under that paint i mean that 40 grit goes right through that top coat and you go right to bare metal so i thought that's interesting that they didn't put any kind of primer on the hood of this car um now the body itself had the old, the red oxide primer um, under the factory paint, and you could tell it's never been repainted. So uh, if anybody knows about that, why GM did that, it'd be an interesting fun fact to know. So just drop that in the comments below. But uh, okay, anyway, back to sanding. All right, right at an hour to knock this side down to bare metal. Uh, so that's not too bad. And just looking at this thing, I mean, it's really straight. And there's a, a couple of little, a few little dings here, here, you know, where you go over with the DA and you can feel a, just a little ding there. Nothing bad. Like I said, hood, hood is super straight. I'm really happy with that. That we don't have to do a, a bunch of body work to this thing. Uh, well, other than the stuff in the front. Okay, so um, now we're going to do the other side. So we'll be back shortly. All right, I got the other side of the hood stripped down, and I went through and cleaned up all the green dust in here. You know, I usually sweep, but I'm finding that using that shop vac to clean up all this sanding dust kind of does a better job. So I'm switching my methods a little bit. Uh, a couple of these repairs that i did this is where this thing got dinged here and here and i think i showed you the last video that i kind of just slid this one this way and this way and bent it straight and welded it back together now this one was a there was actually a hole ripped in there from where i was trying to knock it back out but the metal was good and solid when you know you could look in there and you didn't have the rust issues that was going on behind here so i just put my welder on one fill that hole in filled under here a little bit reshaped it with a flapper wheel and a little touch of a uh, little touch of metal filler and that thing will be good okay so next thing we want to do is patch up this and that dude over there so this is the piece i took out of there and i went ahead and uh cut another piece and bent it i already did a little bit of trimming on here but this thing fits in here really nice so I'm going to get some magnets on that, hold that in place, and we're going to spot that, spot weld that dude in, 
and then I'll go ahead and make the one for the other side. I'll get that one spot welded in, then we'll kind of go back around and um, get them fully welded in, get them ground down over the course of the day. So let me uh, let me set up the camera, get a couple magnets, and we'll uh, we'll tack this thing in, kind of work it, and get the edges right on it. I probably need to knock a little of the paint off there too, so that when I'm welding, I, I got good contact. So back in just a second. All right, I got all my stuff here. Got my magnets, got a body hammer, got a little screwdriver for prying the edges. I think we're in good shape. I forgot to clean those edges up. Let's see, let me around here in a second. So a bit of good news I was thinking about is I've only got one more big body panel to work on on this thing and that's the trunk lid. And that's it doesn't need a whole lot of work. I'm eliminating the trim so I gotta fill the trim holes. Uh, it's super straight. Uh, on the underside of it, there's like one little rust out place I need to take care of, but I don't think I'm gonna strip the underside of the trunk lid like I did the underside of this, cause it's got factory color on it. Um, I may just end up roughing it up and painting right over that factory color, or maybe, uh, maybe a little sealer. We're gonna have to think about how we're gonna do it exactly. Okay. So let me get this dude lined up to where the body line is right where it needs to be. And I got a little bit more of a gap on this one edge back here than what I want, but that's all right. We're gonna work that out. Split the difference a little bit. good and I'm gonna start that out on one just to get it in place those off a little high in the middle I can take this just kind of bring it down a little bit until I got that flush Like flush here, a little low there. Bring this up 
a little bit. Closer you get it, the less filler you got to put it in this thing. Kind of got to tack it a little bit of time and work it in there while you're doing it. That's better. It's a tad high there. try to do that it's pulling it together but it's pulling this bottom lip down a little bit I don't really want to do that try to knock this in a little bit with this Metal's pretty good. It's not not blowing through there. I was kind of worried about that surface rust on the back. pretty good with a one let me I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and chance it turn it up to a two and just try to make a pass around there and put some more dots on there you know you want to hold it together but it's it kind of beads up on top you don't get as good a penetration as is on a higher setting but then you don't want to when you got old thin metal like this you don't want to blow holes in it either so you just got to kind of try it. 
Well, I try, try starting on the lowest setting and work my way up. Pain in there is trying to burn, so uh, it's pretty good. Once we get that done all the way around and grind that down, that'll work good. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's uh, let's make a piece for the other side, and we'll uh, get it tacked in there. Got my next piece cut and fit in there. And uh and this one fits really nice. Doesn't seem to have the little ups and downs on the edges that other piece did, but probably because it's shorter. So let's get a few tacks on this guy. That's nice. gap than I wanted there but you just kind of put it on one and just drag it across there and then you'll get it. Just 
about perfect there. I'll go back to the two for that one. Good as you can ask for. Okay, so I am just going to work. back and forth between these two a few passes on that one a few passes on this one you know just dot little dots far apart keep that from uh keep that from getting hot and warping which it shouldn't on the edge like that you got a pretty you know that, that's pretty stout there it's not like out in the middle of a long piece where it would warp easy but but still i don't want to uh i don't want to warp it all right, so I'm gonna work uh, these two, get these welded up, and then we'll uh, be back with you shortly. Okay, that's it. So I got them fully welded in, ground them down, went back again, hit a few pinholes, ground those down. And uh, yeah, it's gonna need a little filler on it to make it perfect, but it, it feels pretty darn good. I'm, I'm happy with it. You know, we got the we got we got the rust damage fixed, and uh, like I said, a little bit of filler, and and, and uh, that's going to look good. Okay, so one more thing we're going to do, we're going to flip this hood up, uh, like I said, and we're going to pour some of that, some more of that rust oleum treatment down in that uh, in that groove from the other direction to try to uh, just to try to make sure we're getting as much of that rust treated as we can. So let me get the. Let me get this hood set up and uh, we'll do that. Okay, so like I've said a few times, the problem is getting at that double panel down there. So I've got these holes here. I can pour some down in there. I've got these slots down in here. I can pour some down in there. And I kind of got the hood tilted this way right now, so it'll run that way. So we're going to pour some in there. And then we're going to tilt this hood the other way and pour it in those slots and let it run through there. I'm going to let this sit. Missed a spot. I'm going to have to go back there and get that. So I'm going to let that sit. And next week, we're going to shoot some primer on the underside of this hood. And uh, I've got some here we're going to use. And uh, Cardinal Baseball on the radio over there. So I want to get done here and get in there and watch some baseball. It's that time of year. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay. We'll have a whole lot of this left, so I'll we'll kind of use it sparingly. <laughs> yeah, probably got just enough to do this side. of this in here pour some in there oops yeah, we'll work on that all right now we're just gonna rock this hood back and forth and kind of let this run from side to side See if we can get some out this other side. All right, 
that is about as good as we're going to get it. So we're going to let all that stuff dry. And uh, we're going to hit this next weekend. Get some uh, primer on the underside of this hood. And uh, then we're going to move to the last the last panel, which is the trunk lid. So, underside of this thing ain't bad at all. I mean, there's a little surface rust back here, but like right here where this gasket was, I think that's where the trunk gasket sat. Um, I'm thinking if I hit this, and it's only this one side, the other side's fine. I'm thinking if I hit that with a wire brush, I'm gonna have some holes in there. So I might end up putting a little patch in there or doing something with that. I'm not sure exactly what, but uh, at the minimum, we're gonna figure out a way to treat that. Now, as far as the deck lid itself, this thing is super straight, but this V trim is gonna go away. So it's gonna kind of be like the, uh, like the Biscayne without that trim on it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and strip the outside down to down to bare metal like we did the uh, outside of the hood. So might as well do every panel. No sense in leaving one. All right, so we're moving along real good here. Um, I'll be back in just a second. All right, so thanks everybody for tuning in this week and watching part two of the hood repair. And I think we're going to, uh, it's, I mean, metal work is fairly ra well wrapped up. We're going to, like I said, we're going to get some primer on that thing next week and then start on the deck lid. But let's get to the most important part of the video today, which is the Lord's word. So I was talking to um, another Christian this week and was kind of shocked to hear them say that in their opinion, Homosexuality, homosexual people were going to hell because um, the sin of homosexuality is an abomination to God. And we really got to be careful about saying things like that because one, it's not true. And two, it's not our place to judge who is going to hell and who is not. That is God's place. When, it, when um, a, a misused phrase in the Bible says, well, don't judge me. Well, that, that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean don't ever point out um, what is sinful and what's not. It means it's not your place or my place to say if somebody is condemned or not. That is God's place. Our place as Christians is to truthfully bring the word of God to the world and to um, follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit when he tells us to witness to somebody. So, but uh, that word abomination, um, there seems to be a, uh, people think, or some Christians think that that means a, a more serious sin than other sins, and that's not what that means. It's a hard sounding word, but it doesn't mean that, um, well, if I commit a sin, that's one thing, but if I commit an abomination, that's worse. That's not what that means. And, um, so to go to God's word and kind of point out some verses about that. So in Leviticus 18.22, it does say, Thou shalt not lay with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Um, and it also says in there, if a man, uh, this is Leviticus 20, if a man also lay with mankind as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Um, but then we go to Proverbs, and this is Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Uh, says these things are an abomination to the Lord. Uh, a proud look, a lying tongue, uh, hands that shed innocent blood, uh, a heart that divides us wicked Im imaginations, feet that be swift in mischief, uh, a false witness that speaks lies and sows discord among brethren. So um, you can see there's a... a Send the, some of those things I'm sure we all have committed. I know I have. Um, and uh, let's, uh, let's see what else does God say is an abomination. In Proverbs 12, 22, lying lips are an abomination. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. A proud heart is an abomination. 
Uh, the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination. He that turneth his ear away from the law is an abomination. So as you can see, there's a, that's not what that word means. Uh, it just, it means, it means sinful. It means things that um, put distance between you and God that are displeasing to God. Um, so let's try not to be judgmental of other people this week. Let's just try to go out and, um, and speak the word of God in truth, you know, and sometimes that truth is tough. But if, if we feel like we need to say something to somebody, um, pray about that and let the Holy Spirit be your guide, um, you know, to give you the words to say, uh, to, to bring that person to Christ. You know, um, like I said, we're not going to bring we're not going to bring people to Christ by being hateful and judgmental. You know, the, the world already thinks that of us. So we need to uh, we need to be um, we need to be better than that. All right. So let's have a quick prayer together. Father, we just thank you for this week and I thank you for uh, getting me home safe. And um, uh, thank you for everybody who is watching this channel and participating and the comments that they leave. And uh, we just ask that you would send us forth this week um, to do your bidding and that uh, you would you would soften our hearts and prompt us that when we need to speak your word, that uh, that we do it in truth and we do it in love. We ask this in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen. One more thing. I already went I went over 600 subscribers this week. So thank you, everybody who uh, hit that subscribe button. So hit like hit subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. You got a prayer request? Leave a prayer request. And uh, thank you all, and I'll catch you next time.